Hello and welcome back to World 2024 and the head of an incredible matchup later on that is going to be Gen G versus HLE. I wanted to highlight some of Gen G's out of this world team fighting against top. So let's just talk right about it here. You can see the positioning. Chovy's going to be down on one side. We're going to have King and Pays as well as Lehens kind of in the middle. And then Canyon is going to be up on the top side over by himself. While TES are going to look to collapse on Canyon. They're going to be looking for a fight over there. Notice Chovy here is already prepping his Q3 on the Wolves. And as TES goes back over towards Canyon, he's going to pop his ultimate. And then Genji is going to look for a pick here onto Jackie Love. They're able to catch the Jin here. The follow-up is there from Lehens. They get him incredibly low, even with this uh, ult from Tien actually peeling out Chovy. You can see Jackie Love is just barely going to survive as the bear comes out. Chovy can't quite finish him off. And now this is going to put Pace in a bit of an awkward position because Pace has to go in the back line with the killer instinct to actually kill him. So now if we pause and we stop down here for a second, you can look at the spot that they're in. Chovy has actually snapped back. You can see him on the minimap. He's back over by the wolves right now, charging up his Q once more. Pace, yes, they could try to fully commit onto him if they were top. You can see the equalizer was dropped to try to zone him off, but Pace could just flash out the left side of that pit. So instead, they're going to look to try to finish off Canyon, who is low health. Again, he'll use all of his resources there. He W's in, he flashes out, and now Chovy has kited these wolves back in towards the mid lane, has the Q3 ready, and again, watch where Pays is staying. He's always ready to re-engage on the fight. TES see the collapse coming in. There's a perfect re-engage from Chovy. Pays comes in over the top. They shut down Cream. And now, again, talking about resources. Your health bar, your summoners, your ultimates are all resources that Genji are going to use to the maximum here. Instead of flashing back defensively, we can roll the clip. Pays flashes forward into them, knowing he has the cleanse for the Shattering Strike, knowing he has a full health bar, and he can spend that to get the kills Chovy collapses, they flash forward, they get every single kill. Look at the health bars on this Gen G team, by the way. They're all very low. They have all spent their summoners. They've all spent their ultimates. It is incredible to see how well they can coordinate and how well they can really navigate the Razor's Edge in a team fight like this. And it really shows you the gap between the very best in the world and everyone else. So let's now see how the fans voted in our MasterCard fan predictions here. We're gonna bring that up and it does look like Gen yeah. G may have the edge. It, it looks like it, of course, for people who are not in the loop, but I'm sure everyone knows by now. This is a rematch of the LCK Summer Finals where everyone did think that Gen G was going to continue on their golden road after winning in spring and after winning MSI. But it wasn't the case. It was HLE, and I dare say it was also because HLE, in part, team fought better in that series, even though usually Gen G is much better at that part. I think that game five, especially, Zeka obviously was the MVP for that series, and you can see why. He absorbed so much pressure on the Yoni. He made so many big plays. There's a reason why he stood out and a reason why we're so laser focused on this mid lane matchup. Absolutely, and that mid lane matchup, uh, yeah, is uh, going to determine a lot. Zeka doesn't get the upper hand of Chovy a lot, but when he does, it's in the most important moments, and this one is one of those because one of these two teams is going directly to the quarterfinals. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the LCK Fight to World 2024. <laughs> As up next, we have a matchup that everybody can get excited for, man. This is a rematch of the LCK Summer Finals. This is Gen G going up against HLE. This was a match that right before it happened, you could see the prediction graphic over there at LCK. Everybody except for Ox. one man, everybody except for Ox was predicting Gen G. It was a pretty big upset and you could see even in the way that the fan predictions were going, more people today are expecting Gen G to take it, but you can't sleep on Hanwha, man. These guys are tough. But that's why I think so many people even after the finals, the LCK casters, K drill, a lot of like that uh, Talon was just saying, hey, look, even if we were to replay this series, I would still go in expecting Gen G to win. And I think that says a lot about the dominance that Gen G's had in the LCK, but Hanwha stepped up massively. They were no pushovers whatsoever. And I expect another banger of a series that goes the distance for both these teams, just playing off minute differences to find these big wins. Yeah, I feel like Hanwha really deserves so much credit, uh, you know, for their success in that series. And uh, they were already, you know, jumping uh, off of like the AD mids train. Yeah, the Tristana, um, Zeka was playing it and uh, and got some really, really big wins, including a, a solo kill, uh, which was quite nice. But um, 
you know, the Corky is out of the meta now, and Joby was spamming the Corky. So I think mm -hmm. that that is going to be the main thing that changes in the draft here, because all the other champions that they were playing in finals are still being spammed here at Worlds. Uh, and it's just going to be a deviation. Uh, drop the Corky and move on to the next iteration. But pick up the Yone here potentially for Zek oh, and the fact that that yeah. has slipped through the draft. That could be, I, well, in my eyes, the difference maker here for Zek. He's been incredible on that pick, has fit directly into his wheelhouse, and I think it'll be such a massive pickup for Hanwha here. I feel like it's Worlds 2024, boys. If Yone's open and you don't lock it, B1, yeah. I'm wondering what you're doing. Should and always be first pick. Yeah, <laughs> HLE immediately jump ah. on the chance to do that. We'll just make sure we catch up with everything else. Bans, Nidalee, Ziggs, Skarner, banned out by Hanwha Life, and then Genji taking out the Smolder, the Jax, the Maokai. So Aurora had actually uh, creeped up to be the most banned champion, even with all the nerfs that were received heading into Worlds here. Uh, this champ is still so, so powerful um, in picking off, especially AD carries, and the ultimate has been used so successfully. Now you're going to combo it actually with a Nocturne ultimate yeah. to cover darkness over. And I think this works out great for Canyon because the shift back from the carry AP junglers into the Sejuani Maokai felt like he kind of not struggled, but like couldn't have the as insane of an impact as he, as he would have traditionally on the carry pick. So going back towards that carry style now on the Nocturne kind of unlocks him to be that mega threat on the map. And it'll be on Peanut mm. rocking the Sejuani here to try and control and dictate the pace of that. We have seen teams go for these early invades on towards the Nocturne. With the Nara on that top side, that could be a pushing lane you could look to play around, but you still need some sort of control on that bottom side to look to threaten this Nocturne at the early stage. And the insta-lock here uh, from Chovy, bringing out the Ari here. Again, another like double AP solo laners coming through, but we definitely expect them to also have some very strong AD threats as we jump down to the bottom lanes as well for both of these teams. So take out a couple of those options. Yep. Vipers. Ezreal is the first one to hit the ban phase. Yeah, they'll take that one off the table. Very evasive, very slippery, very difficult to deal with sometimes if you don't have enough lockup to deal with him. However, Sejuani and Yone, plenty of lockup on that one. Plenty of CC, plenty of engage potential. Let's see what we want to ban out here on the Hanwha side. Get rid of the Kalista. Get rid of some of that early power available through the Marksman roll. Yeah, and I think that's really what they're trying to hit because this comp, when it gets to level 6, just pops off as Genji. A ton of early skirmishing power, so trying to alleviate a lot of that early Pressure seems to be the game plan for Hanwha. On the opposite side, I'm curious if it's going to be a Jin ban. Just get rid of something that kind of plays out of the main team fight and makes it a little bit more difficult for um, your dive to function on Gen G's side. But other than that, I don't really, yeah, there's the Jin. Because I don't really know what other self-reliant marksmen, apart from Viper, has brought out the Zaya. But do you really want to go for the Zaya in this meta? It's a bit hard to say. Yeah, I mean, if you're facing a lot of the dive, you know, kind of always is nice there. I like what HLE have gone for with banning out some of the lane dominant uh, champions here with the with the Kalista. Of course, Pei's amazing Kalista showed it again versus uh, Weibo already this tournament. Um, had his 28 bomb at MSI <laughs> that, he, that he was yeah. able to drop. Um, that also had Lehenz's Blitzcrank in it, by the way. You know, one of the super flavorful uh, picks that they have up their sleeves. Let's see what they go for here. Okay, now this does bring some more structure too. You know, you're looking at this scheme bomb and you do want some more CC in it. Uh, the Varus does offer that as well as a pretty strong lane phase. But it does feel weird because Varus kind of gets left on his lonesome with the way the rest of this composition wants to play. And against the diving Nar, the dive from the Yone, Pays is going to be very vulnerable and heavily flash reliant, it feels like, in these fights if Genji ever want to try and aggress. So I like that Hanwha essentially just doubling down now on this potential, saying, hey, look, we're just going to continue in with the Kaisa for this dive and just put a ton of pressure onto Pays in this game. Always love seeing a Kaisa, man. Especially after last series, we got to see some pretty fun Kaisa. <laughs> Hope we're going to see, uh, yeah. <laughs> get to see some pretty fun Kaisa here in this one as well. But we do need to see what they are going to round out this composition with here for Delight in the support role. Delight on Engage, I am not surprised to see that whatsoever. <laughs> the Rel is the name of the game here for him. Yeah, he's the probably the best engaged support in the world right now. This guy's absolutely insane on the Rel, the Rakan, some of these picks that really start to stand out for him. But I do like the Rel specifically in this because not only does it have great engage, it can also work very well with the peel that you need. Thanks to that magnetic storm for uh, Nocturne as he dives in, things like the Ari as well, just being able to keep them off of your backline. But 
I, I, I like just the all-round hitter here for Hanwha. It comes off great. Yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting dichotomy that we have because, you know, they have really hard uh, engage here on HLE. The final pick for Lehenz is kind of counter-engage with Renata, uh, trying to get your ulti off to, to buy some space. If you can create darkness with Nocturne and avoid damage, uh, then Gen G can pull this off. But again, Gen G are going with a way squishier comp. Uh, you know, it, it's so much more health, just baseline going to be built on the side of HLE, and they're so much more straightforward with their uh, with their dive, with their full send. But Gen G, this is a team where you do have faith in them uh, to be able to pull off these squishier ones. Yeah, this has to be an early macro masterpiece from Gen G. Otherwise, the lack of someone to face check is going to come back to bite you against what Hanwha have drafted here. So I need to see early control for Pays and Hands on that bottom side. Great mid jungle control with Canyon playing heavily for Chovy, trying to play off that charm into fear, getting the picks this way, and ensuring that Keen can bully through his range advantage in that top side. Otherwise, I feel like this just falls apart so quickly. And I think there's going to be a lot of discussion about the draft. Uh, I know after this game, because if you have a result where the Aurora does not find uh, a lot of, you know, effect in this game, then everyone's just going to flame you for giving over the Yone. Like they gave over the Yone first pick and yeah, they got to trade back and, and grab the Aurora for themselves, which I think is a very strong champion and has been very useful and has been highly banned uh, in this tournament. But if you're unable to, uh, you know, put the extra pressure on onto Viper with it uh, and, and make good use, then everyone's just going to go back to, well, look at Yone's stats this tournament. Hello. He's barely lost any games. He's absolutely crushing it. And you're giving it over to Zekka, who loves this champion, already yeah. used it to beat you. Uh, so and it's yeah, also there's a lot of talk I can already anime see. Anime protagonist, you're putting in the block and mm. just saying, hey, show me what you've got. And that's kind of where this like Yone edgy guy just gets to show his stuff, right? He wants to be close and personal with you. So you're kind of just setting that up. So curious now to see how Genji want to try and make this happen. I don't think they want to opt in towards a lane swap, but it looks like they're just trying to deny a potential lane swap. But I didn't catch there if Viper was spotted as they moved through. All right, as we're waiting on minions to spawn, we do want to bring up that our featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz, this game is right there in the mid lane between Zekka and Jovi. These guys that have had some serious blows back and forth before, even though the all-time record doesn't really favor Zekka. I was looking at some stats before the series today. Zekka's all-time series record against Chovy is uh, two and 16. Two and important ones, though. Yeah, the two ones that he won were World Semifinals 2022, and then LCK Summer Finals just this split. Two big ones for Zeka to say, hey, it's it's not about the quantity. Yeah. It's about the quality. Is it kind of Chad, no? <laughs> <laughs> he doing some really, really big ones. And of course, we do have the lane swap that HLE I've started out. So that means our supports uh, are going to come mid. Actually, we have Keen coming mid, so it's not going to be the support plus, uh, you know, uh, mid laners here for soaking level two, at least for the side of Gen G. Uh, and Delight's just going to pass on through and try and peel some of the jungle attempts here from Canyon since they did have the ward. Yeah, I don't think Gen G spotted that Viper was topside. They only saw Doran, so thought it was going to be standard lane. So Gen G had kind of gone for this in finals where they went for the lane swap and they played for basically what Delight is doing now, which is playing down towards that bottom side, having your top laner TP into the play. But I think it's a good call from Hanwha because Keen in a lane swap just not going to do that great, especially on a potential dive. So they kind of have to adjust now on Gen G's side. And it's kind of interesting to me because a lot of it was in the previous iterations you're talking about, the support actually soaking the full level two from the mid lane. But because he went over to Canyon and kind of messes around with Canyon while Canyon's doing jungle, uh, you still have Delight on the level one, on the rel. And so the defense is going to be a little bit more difficult. Okay, Doran eating a little damage here, but because Delight shows up in time to keep him protected, I would think that Hanma would still be all right here. One extra turret shot there onto Keen as Doran transforms back into Mininar. But that was the nice adaptation here. Doran, wait until he's about to hit Meganar, then TP's bot, so the potential dive on a Mininar is way more difficult. Delight now gets into the bottom lane, hits level two, and now that completely dissuades the dive. So not only do you have Doran, who's gotten into a great start here, he gets that whole wave, and you can see that XP advantage already for the Nar. Yeah, and it was kind of delight. It was like, okay, fine. You know, I, I don't get my level two for it, but then Canyon also wasn't level three for it. So then you didn't have the extra threat there and the uh, kind of domino effect. So nicely done here out of the lane swap. And it should be just continuing on 
uh, with those sides of the map kind of split and finishing their clears off. Ooh, Pei is forced to flash away there from the crash down of Delight as he did find the wraparound attempt there on the Gen G AD carry. Yeah, fake the reset. So traditionally you'd see Delight now reset, go top and match this because of this potential play on Viper. Oh, Viper trying to get away from it there with a the supercharger. Keen down to 250 HP, but Lehens throws out the handshake, forces the cleanse from Viper. Yeah, but that's where you want that support to be there. So that's why it caught Pays off guard, because you would assume he's going to go back and match that top side play, because now there's no one on the top end of the map to try and catch the uh, the potential for this push in. But with Peanut now moving back up towards the top side, they're OK to still soak the wave as, wave as Viper. He'll just be a little late on the reset. Look how scared Pays is in the bottom uh, side. Yeah, he's, he's been <laughs> hovering in that bush for a long a while. He's hanging out, man. He knows that there could there could definitely be some overloading happening on the map in a lane swap type of game. As mid lane, Chovy getting this wave shoved out, wanted to crash it into the tier one here, but the light is to the side. And as Pays just reset and went back down bottom side, now they have vision of it, so they also reset and they're going to send Viper uh, back down there into the lane. We'll see if that flash actually ends up getting punished, uh, because Dagda, you mentioned it in Champion Select, but as the game goes later on, that is going to be a very critical flash, and, and Pays is going to have a very difficult time staying safe with all of this engaged in his face. But even now, after swapping the lanes back uh, and sending Viper right back down here, uh, that is going to be an area of possible attack for HLE, try and punish Pays on his uh, flash cooldown here while his lane is a little bit more vulnerable. I'm curious to see how Canyon tries to play this though because Delight's still level two, means that it's very difficult to actually play aggressive on this bottom side while that flash is down. So Pays and Lehens can play up, push in this wave, potentially reset and look for the Void Grubs that are spawning in 20 seconds. But there is also an argument to just say, hey, we're gonna try and farm it out just like play it safe because we don't with the level advantage for Doran who's about to take over to six having access to those ultimates is actually far more valuable so I think there's a lot of factors for Gen G to try and look in towards this and for Hanwa they would rather just keep Viper in that bottom side because in a 3v3 with both solar laners hitting level six they're in a great spot yeah and Peanut with his level lead over Canyon uh, because of the the early antics there goes right over the grubs to start those up on spawn Yep, and while he's taking those, and there's no contest from the other side, remember, a reminder, you can log into your Riot account on lolesports.com and watch Worlds Live to earn exclusive Worlds emotes, icons, and capsules. So go in there, get your stuff, get some prizes the same way that Peanut is securing those grubs right now. And it looks like Canyon is going on to the other side of the rift to take that Drake. It's the common handshake. You take grubs, I'll take Drake. One neutral objective for either side. This does mean that you are going to get a very early level six Peanut, and Peanut is, as you know, an amazing amazing tank frontline player, an amazing Sejuani player. So him with the early ultimate uh, for Sejuani, I think will be very dangerous for Gen.G. We'll see how Pina is actually able to leverage that as Canyon is going to have to play a little bit of catch up here on Nocturne to be able to get access to his ultimate for the counter. Could immediately go bot here. I think that's why he hasn't reset because look at Pays, still no flash available. This could be the point of contest with the ultimate hit. I mean, when I was watching this series yesterday between Hanwha and G2, it felt like such a peanut gap mm -hmm. in the early game, constantly making the plays here on the Sejuani. We'll see if he can repeat it up against Gen G. Is hanging around down here, but no opportunity to really do a whole lot against Lehens and Pays. You saw Chovy also potentially going towards the bottom lane, but ended up going back into mid here instead. Still very close gold between the two squads. Nobody really pulling away with a lead thanks to extra wave management or extra rotations that they were managing to find against their opponents, catch them off guard a little bit. Always fun to see and go over to, you know, the relationships between all of these players on these two teams. Not only was Finals a banger, but of course, Peanut himself uh, and Delight and Dora and all ex Gen G members and, you know, trying to pay the visit on bottom lane. But respect given and Control Ward really paid off there. So they got to see Even the old say hi and bye. Days, right? like, <laughs> there's so many interactions between all these players and they know each other so well, not only just from playing in Finals, but being on several teams together. So I think it's, it's the Griffin so memories. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. So that's why I think it's really interesting. Whenever you see teams like this go up, all right, it just means the, there's so many layers upon layers of mind games and trickery and everything that's going into <laughs> this that it always gets so fascinating to watch. The Korean onion of teams and players constantly <laughs> unfolding from layer to layer, showing us deeper and deeper connections between these guys. As we still have no kills on the board, eight and a half minutes in, both teams have been fine with this very quiet early game. Yeah. 
I mean, people were even calling uh, Hanwha Life like Genji Orange, you know, and kind of memeing <laughs> on it. But really, adding the two extra world champions really does change the way <laughs> that a team plays. And everyone's so hype on Viper uh, and Zeka especially. Uh, due to their recent play. Let's see about this one, though. Pays. Oh, Delight doing a big engage there on Pays. Genji's AD carry ain't getting away from that one. No bailout bails you out of that much damage. It's first blood over to Viper. And that has been the difference. Really big target on Pays back. He's dead and now no summoner spells again. So the timer continues here. Now you have to really play around. No flash, no cleanse again. It is just going to be a rough game for from him as he kind of already suspected straight from champ select and hey dagda back at champ select you said delight's probably best engaged support in the world right now and he immediately goes in through both summoner spells of pays sets it up knows where he's going to go through the cleanse and the flash makes it easy to get that kill yeah and i mean you get to see on so many different champions because when he started it was definitely rakan is his pick and he will show up on it but he's really evolved as a player now to things like the rel the alistair and having a ton of these extra engaged supports and he just looks so sick on and you got to see it there how mechanically strong he is on these picks and setting up now for Viper with that 1-0 kill. He's got static ship. He's going to be such a menace now in just controlling this matchup against Pays. And Pina is just so crafty, so intelligent, goes right over there. They get the kill. They get the double summoner spells and he immediately, you know, invests everything into the shield here uh, for the locket. Early first purchase for him. Second grubs. He's going to head right back over there too. They have their duo lane finishing up with the minion wave and now that they have a nice low item advantage uh -oh. for Peanut himself. He kind of brushes off some of the damage, though. You do need to try and buy time here because Peanut doesn't have his ultimate open available, which is why Genji are trying to play off this timing window to attack. Move down from Hanwha Life, though. I don't know if they can get off them, though, because that was also Varus' ultimate used for the little chunk of damage. Yeah. All right, second Void Grub is about half HP. Peanut's going to step forward, try to take that one. Meanwhile, down to the bottom lane, Doran trying to get away from Keen. He's down to 100 HP while the Grubs are fought for. Four secured by Hanwha Life, meaning they will get the Void Might spawns. Exactly. All of it is just depending on at least getting one Grub out of the first pack, and then you still have the threat for the second pack of Grubs. Meanwhile, Keen here, the Aurora pick that we were highlighting, yeah. also going to be able to get some extra pressure. Pushes in. This should be a turret plate. Uh, very, very close to getting one. Doran's going to say, Ooh. no turn play for you. I'm going to take away your minion wave. Even with that juicy, tiny sliver of health away. King can't get it quite yet. Yeah, I wanted to get the potential stun underneath the tower. Doesn't manage to hit. Nicely done by Keen to escape. But it does mean Doran will just reset and move back up to the Aurora's the top side. Because it's Dragon is now the big port of call. 10 seconds until that one's available. Zeka's good control over the mid lane, but hasn't gone for that reset quite yet. So I think Gen G should be able to get control with Chovy in mid lane, then start to roam down towards his objective, but on the upside pays, not really in a position quite yet, but should be fine to contest the wave anyway. All right, Doran just continuing to mine some plates off this top side tier one turret. Canyon still behind in pace in the jungle compared to Peanut here on the Sejuani. And I feel like that's a little bit problematic because when you think back to the Gen G that was dominant like earlier on in the year, you were thinking about Canyon on these AP junglers just power clearing, outpacing, setting this insane tempo where even if you can outplay Gen G, they just still have more money because they farm better. And it's just not the case here anymore. But um, he hasn't really had an opportunity to get into any of these lanes because mm -hmm. where do you try and focus? You've no real setup in any of your lanes apart from Chovy and Zek has been doing fine with Pina putting pressure on towards sides and now at the Dragon Pit. Yeah, he and he's got his experimental hex plate done. So I think we see his first ulti here. Okay, Delight with a hex flash over the wall, Peanut. Glacial Prison onto the hands, but it ain't going to be a whole lot now. The lights go off. Paranoia goes in. Gen G with a kill on Peanut, and this is exactly what they needed. Zekka tries to use Fate Seal of the wall, but it's an arrow through his heart. The Samurai falls to the Archer. Gen G take Drake plus two, and they ain't done yet. Keen still scrapping here back and forth as Doran and Delight are both forced back. That was a huge moment for the Gen G squad. Jovi Spear rushed over the wall into the way of the Fate Seal, so Zeka couldn't get over, despite him flashing away. Really good stuff from the Gen G mid laner, and a great fight for Gen G as well. All right, looks like top bot uh, top, or bottom tower gets teleported on. This is going to be so low, though. Can they 
Yeah, Zekka immediately arrives, but now the turret is dead. Zekka goes in 1v3, trying to get the kill on Lahens, but there's not enough damage. Even with the Yone, even with the strongest champ in mid lane, right now, it's not quite there as the tier 1 turret falls. Peanut now stepping into the river. The Normally, I wouldn't even bother talking about Peanut doing that, but after last game, we saw some crazy stuff in the bottom side river, so I got to be careful with those. Yeah, I mean, they they still, Gen G, yeah, they get the, the advantage in the team fight, get the extra kill here, they get the bottom tower, more gold there, and topside, they're still going to be able to protect, so they teleport immediately back out with Chovy. They kind of rotate their solo laners here. As Keen recalls, Chovy goes to replace him on the minion wave, and they keep their defenses strong. And the fact now that you're back out on the map first is crucial for the Rift Herald that's just about to spawn. And we're going to get a glimpse at our MasterCard Lane Economy snapshot. You can see a lot of the gold is actually on Lehens right now, but it is still <laughs> Gen well. <laughs> are getting like good advantages on the map side. And this is what we're talking about coming through from Draft is Gen G needing to outplay on the map and outplay with their macro. And even though it looked a little ropey at the start, they're starting to get control now. And, and the thing is, Genji's so calm, even though Canyon was a little bit behind, he funneled all of his money to make sure he could get his experimental hex plate done in advance of the dragon. And so he gets there, still has his full item. They immediately ult onto Peanut. Uh, him uh, plus Pays able to take Peanut down and secure their second dragon. So dragon stacking game plan still uh, on course here for Genji, uh, plus the extra little bit of gold that they did in advantage as well. And because he's got all that extra uh, ultimate ability haste with the ex experimental hexplate, his old Nocturne ultimate is ready again. So they go over to next objective and we'll be able to burn this one down no problem. Yep. That is gone before Hanwha even has a chance to try to move up and do anything about it. But now Delight needs to be a little bit concerned. Keen is going between worlds, but it's not enough. Delight can still just walk away from it. But the fact he gets to walk away, he opens up Doran to go for this pressure on the bot side turret. No TP for Keen or for Jovi. So it should be some damage down, but he did start to roam up towards that mid lane. So I don't think he'll actually be able to get a ton of chunk and actually even the wave not ready into position. So it doesn't get any work done off the back of this. Just about 16 minutes into the game, still only three kills on the board. Pretty low violence game here in our first one of this best of three. 26,000 to 26.5 thousand gold. Very, very close. Chovy retreating away as Hanwha sends more, more troops to back up Zekka, make sure he can force down this tier one turret, get some more gold in his pockets, unleash the Yone that is on that critical first item power spike. And Kobe talked about Genji funneling Canyon for that first item. It feels like now Hanwha are just gonna funnel Zekka. They know how strong with two items in his back pocket this Yone can be and a massive threat in fights, and especially when it comes towards side lane threat as well, he can threaten Keen, he can threaten Chovy, so as long as these terrors continue to fall, Zekka can carry this game. And he can also threaten Pays. so we'll see if the target on Pays back still continues as we transition towards the team fights. Um, and Genji, of course, they also have so many pick options with this comp. It's so nice. Uh, once Nocturne gets rank two in the ultimate, you have a lot of ability to cover so many side lane plays. And when you have solo laners that are this mobile with double AP mobile summoners, uh, 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 solo laners here with the RE plus the Aurora, then you have a lot of options that make it harder for HLE uh, in some of those. They always have to kind of check, uh, is Canyon going to be hovering bottom or top side? Uh, and they really want to have structured battle lines so they can get their combos. And the other thing that I always think about when I'm looking at Nocturne in a game, especially when you're up against two champions that like to play side lanes, that like to split push like a Yone and a Gnar, Paranoia also stops your ability to see the ward and teleport to the ward. So you've got to be there to the objective fight sooner as now the Herald driven into the tier one turret there by Canyon. Doran has to flash back away, but Peanut's ready for the counter attack here with the Glacial Prison, but a nice follow up comes in from Delight. Over the top goes the hostile takeover. It's already death for the support of Hanwha Life Esports. And Gen G are swift to deliver it. Shovey jumps forward with another one of those spirit rushes as Zekka is forced to snap back to his body with a soul unbound. Gen G with the one for nothing. With the enemy tier one turret nearly killed, they're going to go down to the Drake. Meanwhile, Doran taking the opportunity using the TP to go into the top lane and look to dismantle the tier two turret. The Dark is crucial there and actually recovering the retreat from Gen G. Zekka was still pushing top and had to teleport into the play, so he wasn't there as that fight kicked off, wasn't there to follow up on a great engagement. 
age from delight. But Hanwha TP topside, they will get the tier two. But a third dragon for Genji, one stop away from an Inferno Soul. It's so cool to watch how both of these teams, regardless of the different outcomes of the team fight, immediately just move on to the next step. Even though Hanwha are like, okay, fine, you know that was a good uh, flash and disengage from Lahens. You guys got uh, got the kill there. We are going to immediately transition to our next objective. We know you're going to be able to get Dragon number three, but even though we lost, we're going to still try and get something out of it and try and salvage some sort uh, of consolation prize. Uh, but that was a really nice disengage. You know, you mentioned the Nocturne ultimate, but also Lehens, after he flashes, after the stun wears off, he's able to get his Renata ult off too, uh, and they're able to get their little counter. I do think, though, Gen G are not only like a step ahead, kind of two steps ahead in a lot of these plays, though, because oftentimes when we're seeing is Hanwha want to try and threaten onto objective. You can look at now, Keen has already pushed in that top side, so creating a point of contention on the map. Chovy was doing the same just as we're starting to set up for Dragon, and it feels like Gen G are always quicker off the mark to get towards these lanes, creating pressure for Hanwha, and right now, Hanwha are kind of struggling to keep up. So even though we're saying Zeka in a 1v1 is great, the wave is gone before Zeki even gets there, and Chovy's now drifted to somewhere else, and you're just constantly playing catch-up as Hanwha right now. And always, when you're looking at who's getting side lanes here, look where Canyon is. It's so efficient for Nocturne when he has the extra range from his ultimate, finishes up his Gromp while Chovy's finishing up the mid wave. They're covering their side that they still have their split pressure on, even though Hanwha can have members there. They're so confident with Ari ultimate, plus summoner spells, plus Nocturne even hovering around. Like, you, you just have all of the options kind of covered off and, and you take away the possible moves that HLE want to make even before they make them. And that's the thing again is where we just see that play of Nocturne covering bot to get Chovy into position. Well, Chovy then roams mid, they get the mid tower. And also respect from Pays because this man is playing incredibly safe on the mid wave. He knows how valuable his flash and cleanse are for these fights. He's not even stepping up to finish off the tower there. He's like, no, the minions will do the work. As long as I stay safe, this game we can win it out as Gen G just playing at the map stays. Yeah, so I'm so looking forward to this next big team fight because HLE, like we said, they've constantly done things to grab money on the map back even after, uh, okay, you lose a little bit here in one of the fights or someone, uh, you know, does get picked off. They still have kept enough gold uh, that they can definitely still fight the next big one. And that's really what's going to break it. Like they even have a couple extra uh, hundred gold here in inventory. And it's in a lot of the right places too with one of the kills going over to Viper. That Kaisa is another Kaisa that you have a ton of faith in <laughs> in these team fights. Like Viper has just been insane. So we'll see what HLE can do on the next one. Um, you have a lot of confidence in their setup. Wait a second. They're going to have to. Yeah. They're, Genji's going after the Baron because they saw Hanwha try to make a play on Chovy down there in the bottom lane. So now they're just going to try to force the Baron instead. Chovy teleporting up to join the remaining four players on Genji. The paranoia is there they to stop it. an appropriate follow up. The Baron is secured by Genji, but now they got to try to get everybody else away. Kanan with the flash back over the wall. Hanwha can't do anything. Genji with the 400 IQ Baron rush immediately recognizing the opportunity and jumping on it. At the second they saw all those members down on bot side to look for the tower, Genji knew they could take it. You have a Blade of the Rune King, Gwinsu's Varus, who will rip through the percentage health of that Baron buff, and it's a perfect call, even using the Darkness again as a retreat tool, because you just don't know what's the health on the Baron, or how heavily can we engage? We don't know where Genji are. Beautifully done from Gen G. Chovy sees that Sejuani coming after him on that little Farseer's trinket. He says, all right, let's go for it. And everybody else starts up the play. Chovy even teleporting to join the rest of Gen G before going back to the base to heal up the 40% chunk that he took from Zekka in the bottom lane. They knew to full send it. They get everybody out safely. Beautifully done from Gen G now with 45 seconds left on the clock until what will be their Dragon Soul spawns. They've got Baron and control over the rift. Yeah, and you were just talking about how them being one step ahead of HLE on these moves is impactful. Like, that was a very big step. They know what your next move is going to be. They try and punish it and uh, are able to actually fully finish off the Baron and then still rotate down to the other side of the map. 20 seconds on this very early Dragon Soul. Gen G have been so clean with it, but critical breaking point is about to approach again. HLE have at least kept up enough gold 
Oh, Wait. Keen jumping in there immediately with the Between Worlds. If they pick the enemy jungler, no way to contest that dragon. Oh my god! Unless Delight goes in for a massive four man engage. Gen G <laughs> melts before your eyes. Do not doubt Delight, or you will find yourself in the dirt. A triple kill for Viper and Hanwha just buried Gen G. Nice macro, kids. How's this wombo come? taste that was huge delight into Zeka able to destroy them and HLE that also denies the dragon soul that was beautiful because peanut panics he throws everything out and is just like please yeah. for the love of god get people off me but the tp still comes through from zeka and a delight we call this oh. this engage into zeka with the follow-up the clutch moments for hanwa have been where they've shown off this summer and it's showing off once again on the world stage and viper's just free firing on the kaisa there sidesteps the renata ultimate Able to melt <laughs> Same, that honestly. The same. Perfect <laughs> facial expression. That is a that's a perfect meme. Another meme yeah. for the tournament, baby. <laughs> Team fight damage, man. Over four thousand from Zeka. Nearly the same for Viper on his Kaisa. And oh. now Hanwa Life, after it looked like they were about to lose the Dragon Soul, lose their control over the game. Delight, delight. Delight on the rel, absolutely clutch in that moment. Engage King. I mean, yeah. what more can you say? <laughs> absolutely beautiful. And I always also love and give like extra bonus credit when you pull off an engage in, in those scenarios where you already just lost a member. But you know, if we just layer our abilities here, we're gonna catch multiple and delete multiple enemy members. So even though we're down Peanut, which is supposed to be like the first line uh, of the team comp, it doesn't matter. But it was even like a, a reaction test because the darkness comes off and he's uh -huh. like, oh, I got us. It was like a It was like, like you know, you come off, the blindfold comes and you're like, okay, <laughs> play this one out. What are you gonna do? <laughs> It was just beautiful layering too, you know, stun into the full crash down, ultimate, Zeka is immediately following up, and now, yeah, Canyon, he'll try to use Paranoia defensively, but it's too late. Viper's already unstoppable. Gen G seeing if they might be able to get something back, a handshake on Delight is definitely not enough. As Hanwha Life Esports now with a 5v4 for the next 30 seconds. Hanwha trying to show it wasn't a flash in the pan and silencing a lot of the doubters. I think uh, Ox probably grinning from ear to ear as he looks again because this has been a great performance from Hanwha. But we did call this when we saw the draft from Gen G. They needed to be clinical, they needed to not make mistakes. And unfortunately, they group up that one time. And now Hanwha just get to use the strength of their engage, their tanky frontline, their great DPS in this Yone and Kaisa to blitz through what is a very Every squishy team from Gen G. Yeah, now they're just a, a very rich hammer that is going to just force plays. <laughs> Gold-plated hammer. Gold-plated <laughs> hammer just going to force plays everywhere because they already gave you a taste of the engage, and now they've just got so much extra money on the carries. You know, we're talking about Viper, and he's just free-firing and just eating up extra gold. Now, all of a sudden, the Kaisa's shot up to three items, and things just even get more bad uh, for Gen G. It just uh, really all kind of falls apart now since they are so so squishy, squishy as a team comp. And you just said three, but right after you said it, man, <laughs> another Viper half. just bought an arm guard. And normally I would call that a half an item. That is the most broken active in League of Legends. <laughs> that, it might as well be a full item until that thing breaks as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. This dude can now fly in and not give a damn what they shoot back at him. Yeah, especially with Kaisa. You love to see the AD carries that are just jumping in danger, outplaying it at every turn. Let's see, can Gen G do something surprising here though? They've got a lot of like surprise tools. We mentioned earlier the pick potential of Aurora Nocturne, Ari, you know, things that you want to try and like cobble together, but it's so hard now because your map has just been taken over and, and there's not a lot of areas for you to set those plays up. <laughs> HLE, you can see them very cohesively moving as a team uh, to try and take over Vision and not allow Genji to get their pick now to try and get back into the game.
Oh, immediate jump, the pick on Chovy. You just see Viper fly across the screen and then the infernal pinatas fly out of Chovy. Beautiful pick coming out from Hanwha. Baron is on the map. The enemy jungler dead for 40 seconds. Here's the problem if you're Gen G. Not only is that mid lane pick gonna mean that the enemy squad gets Baron, Chovy's only gonna respawn right before the infernal Drake spawns again, and Hanwha's gonna continue having control over the entire rift. And I want to give a shout out to Pino because he's been playing absolutely insane this game. The picks have been on point. He's dictated the pace of the early game, denying Canyon so many of the angles he would like to attack. And he has just been so good at playing with delight to set up these plays. Plus, you see the super deep wards. The deep ward in yeah, mid crazy. lane is what Peanut saw him on. He was like, okay, Chovy's mid. Peanut can get into position, flash over the wall to make sure they can find their pick. Even on a champion as slippery as Ari, they instantly deleted him, but now Genji, they want another attempt at this soul. Okay, Chovy respond in time to be able to make his TP in, as now another TP is about to show up for Hanwha. Doran has rejoined everybody else. Paranoia cast a charm onto Delight, but he's the only one. Between Worlds has already been used. Doran here in the front line jumps in from a Mega Nar, but he ain't gonna find the angle here just yet. Zekka resetting with a soul on bound. Keen's the first to drop. Viper's going godlike. Genji scrambling to fight back, but Zekka's too strong. Viper's too strong. Genji's running towards the wrong base, and Doran's gonna hit him with the wallop. Couple more auto attacks, gets it done. Chovy's about to drop again. Call it a Drake, call it an ace, call it a fight for Hanwha. Call me the LCK champions. Hanwha showing why they won, why they threatened Gen G, and why they want to join LNG in the quarterfinal stage. We got 15 second death timers still ticking down for the Gen G team as H L E are on to the Nexus turrets. They will crumble before them and Hanwha Live Esports take the first game in the LCK Finals rematch. Finals ain't no fluke, okay? <laughs> That's just game number one. But Hanwha really just retook control and of course, player of the game. We don't give those out, but I'm gonna give one out yeah. now. Delight, <laughs> yeah. you know, what you can beast. honor enemies now as well. I'm pretty sure all of the <laughs> other Gen G members are like, you know what, Delight, that's also an honor. Great job, fair enough. <laughs> Delight's engaged, got it done, and everybody else just kept it rolling all the way to the enemy nexus. Game number one is done. We're tossing to a break, but we'll be back with more Worlds 2024 real soon. Don't you go anywhere. Red Bull gives you wings. And if you're wondering why I move the way I do, I just feel so good. good.